I've had a customer phone up, uh, GMC Concrete the company is. They've got a bunch of small DAF LF Euro 6s and a couple of other makes, what have you. But um, they've got a two warning lights on the dash. One is power reduction and the other is add blue quality. Now on an LF, this usually points to one thing in particular, which is a NOx conversion efficiency issue. This can range from add blue dosing faults or usually people fitting shit like this, non-genuine NOx sensors, instead of fitting things such as a genuine sensor like this. So we're going to head up over there now onto the coast and go and see what's going on. Not a big road trip today, but with about 40 minutes of travel time, I headed up to Chester first, then picked up the A55 and across to the coast. I love it here, the view is amazing. Anyway, we will be in and out of the workshop with this DAF LF today, so we best get in and confirm the customer's concern. Sure enough, with incorrect AdBlue and power reduction on the dip, I'm going to need some decent diagnostics such as gel tests from Eclipse. We can start by getting the VCI plugged in and ensuring the VCI is powered up and communicating with some nice blue LEDs. We can then identify the chassis and then select ECS DC6 for our engine and after treatment, as in a DAF LF, it is all in one ECU. With a select few diagnostic trouble codes to go off, we will concentrate on 4361-18, as it has an amber engine warning signal and has diagnostics available for this particular fault code. From our troubleshooting data provided by Jaltest, we will work through this test plan, identifying issues and rectifying them as we go. A lot of factors can contribute to this issue, but the usual one is faulty knock sensors. DAF does have an alternative testing plan that involves a road test monitoring NOx and the SCR system, but it is quite involved, so we won't be doing that today. Anyway, with me checking what I need to start with, I've gone for simple first, add blue quality. I dip the tank and place the sample on the refractorometer. Add blue or diesel exhaust fluid, DEF, is a solution of 32.5% urea in deionized water. So with this same 32.5%, it doesn't get much better than that. Best to do some checks on these NOx sensors. Today I'm checking for genuine sensors that we have fitted here. No point spending a thousand pounds on sensors just to try and fix it. Other things I'm checking for are exhaust leaks, such as this gasket sticking out the DPF. We best fix this later. Time to pull this cover off the outside of the EAS system and see what we're dealing with here. Not a lot going on here usually, until I played this clip back. All the pipes are in the delta pressure sensor. So I guess we have this after cat temperature sensor to sort. I was surprised we didn't have fault codes for this temperature sensor. Luckily, it screwed right back in and I could just reach in and do it up. Back on gel test, I need to refresh my memory on what was in our test plan. With a functional test on the AdBlue system, the metering valve and a check on the decomposition pipe next, I best go to the van and grab some tools to get this AdBlue dosing valve off. Three M6 bolts later, and this AdBlue dosing valve looks like it has seen better days. I'm going to have to do my best to clean this up now and not damage the injector in the centre. We can then think about getting this set up for a dosing test.
back on JAL test, we can head over to the system check and find the AdBlue metering test. This test is fully automated by the diagnostic machine and all we're concerned about is quantity and the spray pattern from the dosing valve. When the system conditions are met, JAL test will run this test for a specific time. I didn't run the system prime test before as I can monitor the system pressure here which should be about 8 bar. With this remaining consistent, our attention can turn to the dosing valve. Here we can watch the injector spray pattern to ensure it's correctly spraying and then wait for gel test to finish the test to check our ad blue quantity. With the quantity just under 100 mil, we are at the correct specification for this test. Next up is the decomposition pipe. You might wonder what a decomposition pipe is. Well, let me show you. As I said before, AdBlue is built up of 32.5% urea. The rest is deionized water. The ammonia in the urea needs to mix with the exhaust fumes. So not only do we need to inject this mix into the exhaust, we need to evaporate the water out of the AdBlue. Hence these flaps in the pipe. This length of pipe swirls our exhaust gases and allows the ammonia to bond with the NOx gases before hitting the cat, minus our water basically. With no white deposits in here, I'd say it's working correctly. So we can slap the dosing valve back on the exhaust system and get the truck in the workshop. I'm going to try and get this clamp off the DPF and have a look at that next. With the clamp off, this gasket really hasn't been doing its job. So I'm going to split the dock off the DPF and get a new gasket put in here. With a new gasket correctly installed and a new clamp supplied and fitted, I could bolt the system back together and refit this cover on the exhaust system. Nothing super conclusive today unfortunately, and in this case we will just clear the faults, top the AdBlue up to trigger the NOx monitoring, and see if we've made any headway with the repairs we have carried out today. I might be re-attending this vehicle to check the NOx sensors if it faults again, but then if they turn out okay, it's looking like it's going to be the SCR cat. Only time will tell. I'm sure many of you have come across this fault before. How did you fix the fault in the end? Let me know in the comments and as usual hit the like button, subscribe if you want to catch more videos from me and I'll catch you in the next one. Hopefully it won't be this truck again. <laughs>